four octaves? Yeah, if you want to expand to four octaves. What I would do is the first playing, you do the three octaves, and then you double it, which would be 16th notes, to the four octaves, and it possibly you could double that, possibly to the, still the four octaves, to 30 seconds. Remember, it's not going to be that fast if you have a very slow eighth note. But if your eighth note is slow, like that, then your 16th would be da 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 da, and the 32nd would be da 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 da. Right? It won't be that dramatically over the cliff, right? Um, so let's go back to the really slow triplet. This is a triplet 16th note, three octaves, then go to double it, four octaves, double it, four, and then in staccato, everything's four now. Only one playing is three octaves, right? Let's try that. One, -ly, two, -ly, three, -ly. probably myself included, that the glitchiest place is the very last octave. And you know why it is? Because suddenly the left hand just has a block chord that it's unraveling just down like this. Right? That hasn't happened in the middle of it, right? And this hand, meanwhile, has to shift over. So you, we, we should really practice that last octave a few times. Like two, three. Quarter notes almost, quarters and three. Da -dum. There's a little rotation here in this hand, right? This hand rotates a little that way, and this loops around that way at the same time, right? Two different mm -hmm. motions. So try ta D. Good, that's excellent. Now double it to da. And triple it to da 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 da. Yeah. Now you've got to remember what that felt like, so that when you get there, you have a muscle memory of how that, how you executed it physically, right? Okay. Now let's practice from here all the way down and in the slow one first. Da we do right. Now we're gonna go da da we do. So ta ooh, from the very top. Okay, now go back to the top and double it to da doodly yoodly yoodly yum. And okay, good with the bottom. It's let me let me make a suggestion on that. Remember we talked about the position of the hand as you um, you you make the transition from the third finger to the thumb to the second finger. That's F sharp A D. We're not going to do so much elbow out so much of that. Um, I've discovered that the less of that the better. However, the elbow has to move a little. But the main uh, the main dr drive driven finger um, is. Um, the hand drives the fingers. Uh, the thumb comes under. You got to get that thumb under, and you have to get the. Uh, let me get the uh, little camera out. I think I've shown you this before. Um, when you get to this shift here, can you see it? Yeah. Okay. This is pivotal. Now uh, your your finger lengthens, and your thumb's already um, hugging under here like a little ceiling is pocketed there. It has to get pocketed pretty fast. But you're shifting your hand over so you have a longer finger. See, the hand is longer. I don't need to do that because if I do that, this gets me not, uh, totally unaligned. But just get that thumb under, like pull the thumb under like that. Get it under. But let your finger lengthen and your hand angle out a little this way in a diagonal. Feel the diagonal of the hand. See if that works. Diagonal of your hand in relation to the keyboard. Oh, that looks better. There. Okay. Yeah. So, so when you go slowly, when you get to three, you already see the diagonal of the hand and the thumb's pocketed underneath there. It's ready to play. You see, my elbow isn't out at all. It isn't out. 
Mm. Isn't it? If it comes out, it's only slightly. It's just like angling with my hand. My hand's determining where my elbow is, right? Try that idea. That's good. It's good. Yeah, rely on your hand angle and your thumb pulling under it. Right. Yeah, because you're going to get good speed if you do that. And accuracy. Longer finger. Hand out. Good. Come back down. Swing mm -hmm. around. Exactly. That was pretty good. Uh, you're kind of looping around and you want to know eyeball where the finger wants to go on the A. It has to know exactly the spot that it has to be. Trust me. And then it has to kind of match up with where two is that they can be played together if you had to. Because that's where they're going, right? They feel like a block because they have to be lined up. A and F sharp are comfortable, right? Because you don't want like A pulling out and F sharp going in. Your hand zigzagging, right? That's why the blocking is good. You can like loop around and do this. Loop around and know where you want to be. Right? Know where you want to be. Yeah, I, I find that, that blocking is so good for, a uh, good blocking is very good for accuracy and playing in general. Okay, do a little blocking. Do this, block this, single note, swivel around, come out with your thumb, swivel around. Thumb around, prepare. Thumb around, prepare. Soft thumb, swing around. Okay, okay, if that's where you start. So now let's see if it helps. Roll it out. Doodly, 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 and. Sharp D over to A, right? We do this. So that's good. 
Um, all right, so we'll continue mostly the D major because it seemed like your E minor is fine. I think you've done great work. On